Just a short time ago in the federal court in South Florida, President Trump filing a motion asking the court for special judicial oversight and for more relief from what even the federal magistrate called an unprecedented search and seizure. In the file pleading, lawyers on behalf of the former president say a federal judge should appoint a special monitor to essentially monitor and go through what was seized at his home. Among other things, Trump's lawyers wrote in the pleading, quote, politics cannot be allowed to impact the administration of justice. The lawyers go on to say President Donald Trump is the clear front runner in the 2024 Republican presidential primary and in the 2024 general election should he decide to run. And just as we were getting to air, former President Trump releasing a statement saying in part, quote, this Mar-a-Lago break-in search and seizure was illegal and unconstitutional, and we are taking all actions necessary to get the documents back, which we would have given to them without the necessity of the despicable raid of my home so that I can give them to the National Archives until they are required for the future Donald J. Trump Presidential Library and Museum. Much more on this and Trump court action and the latest in the FBI's raid of Donald Trump's home coming up. And it is official. We know we will see at least some of the Trump Mar-a-Lago raid affidavit. Federal Magistrate Bruce Reinhardt officially ruling against the Justice Department. In a written order issued today, Magistrate Reinhardt stating that he is rejecting the Department of Justice's request to keep the entire raid affidavit sealed. He said the government has met its burden of showing good cause to keep parts of the affidavit sealed but not the entire affidavit. In his court order, he acknowledged the raid and the former president's home was, quote, unprecedented. The magistrate is giving the Justice Department until Thursday to state which parts of the affidavit should remain sealed. Former federal prosecutor Joseph Moreno joins me. Good evening, sir. Pleasure to be with you. Nice to see you. All right, so in this pleading that was filed today, there are essentially the following four things that the president's asking for. He wants a special master. That's to determine what should be looked at and what should not be looked at in terms of the documents. Stop all further review of the documents, which would stop the assistant United States attorney and the FBI from going through any more of those documents until further notice. He wants a more detailed receipt of what was seized rather than just the, the list that he got. And he wants to have returned all items that are beyond the, uh, beyond the search warrant, what the magistrate originally um, uh, uh, said that could be seized. So what are your thoughts on the uh, president fighting back with this motion? It's an aggressive move, Greta. I mean, the president took a little bit of, uh, of, uh, of criticism last week when people noticed that the Trump team did not directly weigh in to the argument before Judge Reinhardt regarding the uh, the, the affidavit itself, and then he kind of they kind of left that to media groups to argue instead. Well, he's not making the same mistake this week. He's really leaning in, and um, it's a good it's a good position to be in because it, it expresses an air of confidence. It expresses an air that the former president is not afraid of what's in here. He's not afraid to make it public, and he's saying, "Look, let's you know put our cards on the table." It's an aggressive move, but it's probably a savvy one. You know what I thought was sort of interesting? It's filed in the um, United States District Court, Southern District of Florida. It's going to a federal judge. Now, it wasn't a federal judge who issued the search warrant. It was a federal magistrate, which is sort of routine. So he's sort of leapfrogging just uh, Magistrate Reinhardt and going to a federal judge. Now, it may get sent back down to Reinhardt, but nonetheless, that, uh, you know, it's, sort of, you know, it's sort of a statement just doing that. Do you agree? Exactly. It's, an, it's another bold statement, Greta. That's right. It's saying, like, you know, they're... they're they're not willing to just stay in kind of the kiddie pool. They want to you know, bring it up to the next level, and they're not afraid of further scrutiny. And uh, you know, I think the president's going to have some some interesting arguments here, right? There's going to be arguments about documents that might be attorney-client privilege, documents that might be uh, subject to executive privilege, an argument that perhaps the warrant was too broad, and therefore some of these documents the government shouldn't have at all, regardless of the privilege uh, uh, determination ultimately. And I think the uh, the, the 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 argument to call for a special master, it's a good way to say, again, I'm not afraid of having an objective outside third party come in here who is separate from the investigative team, separate from the FBI, to take a look at these documents and weigh whether my arguments, those of former President Trump, are legitimate. Now, is it, and so the Fed, the uh, master they're asking for, do you read this or do you mean this to be different than Magistrate Reinhardt going through those documents? I think they're going to want someone different. I think they're going to say it should be an absolutely independent third party, whether it's a judge or a, another kind of lawyer, uh, but someone who is completely removed, who is looking at these separately. I think that's what they're going to ask for and, and ultimately uh, try to achieve here. 
You know, it's sort of interesting going through the document. You know, they, they recite the facts. Now, obviously, the facts, according to one side, that's what a pleading is. It's just one side. But he talks about how when on June 3rd that someone from the Justice Department, someone from the U.S. Attorney's Office was there looking um, at documents. They asked to see the storage room. And then once they, once they were shown the storage room, they went back, uh, back in the dining room, and he thanked the president for showing the storage room. That was on June 3rd. And it wasn't until five days later on June 8th that they said to secure that particular room. On June 22nd, they got the... Uh, they got a subpoena for footage outside, uh, 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 video footage outside that. And then you jump ahead to August when all of a sudden there's an emergency to go into the Mar-a-Lago home. So I think the, the timeline weighs against the Justice Department in this. Yeah, I mean, and I think Donald Trump's not going to let that go. I mean, he's going to say, look, you know, we had this open and uh, honest and amicable relationship. Um, I mean, there might have been some disagreements about whether the documents belonged with him or belonged to the archives, but we were talking. There were open lines of communication. They asked for certain security measures. We complied. Then next thing you know, there's 30 FBI agents at my door. So what changed? What elevated it? And that brings into the question, is there a legitimate legal reason that they went from zero to 60 in those months? Or is it political? You know, this, what this is not a, is not a lawsuit against the Justice Department. It's not like an unconstitutional search and seizure because there was a warrant issued here. I mean, usually, I mean, those Fourth Amendment cases are when the, you know, the, the police or the FBI come and, you know, guns blazing and there's no warrant. But here there was a warrant. And so it's, it, what they're saying is that there are other problems with it, not, not, the, not the actual, you know, the warrant itself. Right. There might be a there might be an opportunity at some point to challenge the probable cause determination, and that could come later. That could be part of a, a separate kind of chain of litigation here. Or the defense, or the president's team might decide, you know what, it's not worth our time. There's enough here for probable cause. That's a battle not worth fighting. Let's take it to another plane and try these different arguments. I thought it was so interesting. The judge issued the that issued the order this morning. The magistrate saying that um, that parts of the affidavit will be released, but you know not not all of it. But he said that he went back through it and he reviewed the affidavit. And he thought that there really was probable cause to to uh, order the search warrant in the first place. And what I thought he was doing was sort of doing damage control on himself. That he goes back and reviews what he already issued, and then in a pleading today says that his decision was right. I thought that was sort of interesting. But Judge Reinhardt's in a tough spot now, right, that he's put himself in, because if he doesn't release the affidavit or if he allows it to be redacted so heavily that it's meaningless, he gets accused of basically not allowing for public transparency. If he does release the affidavit and there's enough text that we can actually read it and understand what's happening, then he's going to be under scrutiny because he's the one who decided there was probable cause. And so people are going to read this and say, OK, let me kind of judge for myself. What were the arguments put forth by the FBI and the Justice Department? And was it a fair decision that was made? Is, is there any way a federal judge can say no? All the, all the president's saying is, is appoint an independent master to go over the documents as to what's read and what's not read. Is there, it, it, how does a federal judge uh, say no to the president on this? I mean, a, a judge can say, I don't like your arguments. It's, it, it's, uh, it's, it's actually not as um, ambiguous as you make it out. I think that there's enough here that there's, uh, the protections that are already in the system are sufficient and a special master is not required. I mean, you know, I think many would say, what's the harm in doing this? It seems like a very fair and objective kind of step here, but there's reasons why the system works. And yeah, so I, I can see it's conceivable he gets pushback. I, I, I think that might be an unusual case, but, uh, but the fact that Magistrate Reinhardt's even using the term unprecedented puts us in a whole other level than sort of our routine case. But we'll see. A lot could happen, and a lot will happen indeed. Uh, Joseph Moreno, thank you for joining me, sir. Thanks, Greta. Always a pleasure.